right guys, so if you're just popping on, I'm Melissa with Sentimental Salvage and Design up here in Alberta, Canada. What I've created here is, um, it's a little gift box on a little pedestal stand and I've used IOD molds kind of all over it and I've glued the little box to this little pedestal. So what we're starting with is just a little basically a little cardboard box from the dollar store so super easy to find anybody you can get these anywhere and these are just little wooden pillars like a little candle pillar or anything you can find these at thrift stores there's tons of them um, I always buy these when I see them because I never know when I'm gonna need it so that's what we're gonna be doing and I went ahead and I did up the molds and everything are on here already and I used the snowflake mold IOD's big popular mold last year I used the snowflake mold all over this one so there's a bunch of the little ones and the big one on the top these are all poured using the, the two-part resin the amazing casting resin um, it's easier with the snowflakes so they're pretty pretty delicate so this one I used actually prom queen DIYs prom queen and then I went over it with a little bit of um, uh, white swan. So prom queen and white swan. And then I also used um, the silver lining, the mica powder that came out a while back. I used that to give it that little bit of bling. So it just looks, it's that festive. You gotta have glitter, right? So this one, because this whole pink, rose color has been huge this year for Christmas. I am going to use petticoat pink and cherry picked. Um, I find if you add a tiny bit of cherry pick to the petticoat pink, it gives you that really nice, warm, soft, uh, pinky rosy color. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm just gonna pull out my, my brushes get going and we'll mix this up actually I might mix that in a little bowl how about we mix it in a little bowl so we'll just pour a little bit of this we're gonna use more of the petticoat and just a tiny wee bit of the cherry picked it just warms up the pink If you guys have any questions as I'm going along, just let me know. I'm gonna try to keep an eye on the questions. Okay, we're just gonna start with this tiny little bit because it really doesn't take much. I just wanna give it a little bit of that, just a little bit of warmth. And it kind of almost makes it like a dusty rose kind of color a little bit. Yep, that's going to be enough. So just a little bit of cherry picked into the petticoat pink. So it's less little girl pink and more grown up pink. How about we go with that? I haven't used my petticoat pink in quite a while and it was pretty thick. So I had to add some water and I might have added just a little bit too much, but it'll work perfect for this. All right, so actually let's start with this little beauty. We'll give it, give it a go. This is probably gonna take two coats like I said, I watered down my, my petticoat a little bit too much. It's a little runnier than it normally is. I'm using a these are, this is probably my favorite paintbrush. It's a Klingon S30. 
It's kind of my go-to. I paint everything from little crafts to um, little decor pieces and big, huge furniture pieces. This is most definitely my favorite brush. All right. So we don't have to paint this because we're just gluing it to the bottom of our box. But I do wanna make sure I get this edge covered. All right, we'll put that aside and let that dry. Oh, another tip, I guess. When I make molds using the resin, I always make extras. So if there's, I have extra resin already mixed up, I just keep pouring it in molds. And then I have this little stash that's available kind of whenever I need it. So then you're not wasting any resin because you got to pour that stuff quick. It sets up so fast that it's kind of, it's a good idea to have those handy and then you never know if you need a little craft that needs a little oomph. This cardboard sucks up the paint pretty well, so I won't be I won't be needing an extra coat on this, that's for sure. So getting the paint into all those little nooks and crannies is a little bit of a, just kind of slap it on and then work it in with my brush. I'm not pushing really hard, I'm just getting it, trying to go at it from every angle so that you get all your coverage in there without having to go back a zillion times. You'll inevitably probably see spots you missed. I always do, but it's easy to, easy to fix. Okay, I'm gonna put that down for a second and let that dry so I can actually hold on to it to get the rest of it. Um, I guess we'll just start with this edge. I'm really liking this color. It's amazing how popular pink has been this Christmas. Anything pink or that, like trees, everything. Pink has been a very big color. Don't normally look at pink and think of it as being a Christmas color, but this year it surprised us. Very trendy. Now let's get back to this one. This paint dries so fast. It's the perfect paint for impatient people like me. I really like this color. So I'm just gonna give this a quick, it's still wet in here. I'm gonna give it a quick buzz with the heat tool. All right. I'll give this a second coat. Like I said earlier, the rest of the box isn't gonna need a second coat, but this had that shiny gold colored paint on it. So it's not, 
not taking the, the coverage as well. Okay, so this is fully painted. And I'm not going to need my pink anymore, but I like this color, so I don't want to waste it. So I'm going to put it in this little, I get these little two ounce containers also from the dollar store. And it'll keep my paint for a few weeks safely. So I can always use that color again. Okay, move that aside. I've got a little lid here, I think. Yes. All right. Okay, so, and I poured out, this is white swan. I just poured out a little bit of the white swan here. So that's what color we're gonna use next, just to give it a little bit of highlight like I did with this one. This one is painted with uh, Prom Queen and I used a little bit of white swan to kind of brighten the snowflakes up and the molds that I put. These are snowflakes, actually, I guess I can mention how I did these. They're poured with resin as well. And then when I was ready to put them on this bottom edge, I just warmed them up with my heat tool and I just used this putty knife and I just sliced them in half. I just put it in the middle and pushed down until it broke apart. So super easy way to get a nice clean cut. So that's how I did that. Now I'm just going to take, I've got, this is an old, sometimes it works for what I need it for, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm going to use this old ratty brush to just kind of stipple on, couldn't find the word there, stipple on some uh, white. So again, this is white swan, but my white swan's in this big can and I just wanted a little bit. So I poured it out before I, before I came on. And I'm gonna grab my mister bottle and just give this a little bit of a mist so my pink base isn't quite so thirsty. I want this white to be a little bit subtle-ish, if that makes sense. So if you missed it a little bit first, it doesn't really suck it up quite the same. And if you put too much, you can always go, I just use a little wet, a baby wipe, and you can just dab it here a little bit to just soften that so it's not quite so bold. Right there. I'm trying to just get the paint on the high points and not around the base or the, the box itself. I kind of just want it on the snowflake. And this brush is, well, it's kind of sad, but it kind of works. There we go. So there's that step on that. And then we're gonna be ready for, ready for glitter here. I'm gonna grab a smaller brush. If I can find something that's gonna be a little bit smaller. Maybe this one will work. There we go. Give me a little bit more control. And I don't know if you can see, that's pretty white there. And I just wanna kinda I'm just with a crumpled up one and I'm just kind of 
tapping and then I twist a little bit, but really light. You don't put a lot of pressure. It's just going to take too much off. This just gives you a little bit of variation in your color. So it's just not plain. The fun part of these molds is that it gives you that, that detail to play with. And doing any of these projects with DIY paint is, it's quick and it's easy and it's super forgiving because you can always go back and like I can add more, I can take some off, I can keep playing with it until it's exactly how I want it. And then when we add that little bit of mica powder, these are really gonna, gonna be awesome. I've kind of stopped, you probably noticed I'm not spraying it with water anymore. I'm finding I'm not really needing it here. It's good to just kind of pounce it on there and then I just take my wet wipe and dab it back a little bit and I'm liking how that's turning out. So I've abandoned the water spraying for now. Those of you, if any of you follow my main <clears throat> page sentimental salvage and design or if you're in my group you know that um, I show a lot of what not to do or how not to do things I'm uh, not afraid to totally screw up on live video so it's happened more than you can imagine but I think maybe it's a good thing So always keep your old janky brushes because they work really well for stuff like this. One more. And I'll just go do some touch-ups. Sometimes I find that when you get to the end, you're kind of got a whole different look going. So you kind of got to go back and and catch them all up so they all kind of look the same. Just gonna add a little bit more white to these guys. I was kind of chintzy with it, apparently. All right. They look so pretty. So now on this one, I want to just add a little bit of white in on this edge here and right on this edge so this one i'm gonna i'm gonna give that a little spritz and i'm just gonna pounce around here Kind of look like snow. 
Okay, now I just want to do a little bit around this edge. Okay, so I am going to, I think, I'm debating on whether I'm going to big top this or I'm going to wax it. I think I'm going to use big top. So I'm going to use the silver linings mica powder to add some bling. Because I have my saran wrap on top trying to you know what the lids get like. So I'm just going to actually pop this with the heat tool a little bit. I want to work on this one first because it's just harder to hang on to. I'm just gonna swipe on a layer of Big Top first to give it that base layer to protect my paint. Because if you've used DIY paint for any length of time, you know how it will reactivate. And I don't wanna be playing with it and the mica powder and worrying about it pulling off. So we're just gonna give it this swipe coat, I call it, just to get it on there, nothing fancy. It just seals it in. So you have a little bit more grace when you're putting on your, your mica powder. You can play with it a little bit more without fear of pulling your paint off. Because we all know the best thing about DIY paint is that reactivation when it comes to blending but it can be a little frustrating when you're trying to do not blending. So you just gotta come up with a plan. And I'm not painting the very top because I am gluing the cardboard down to that. Okay, so that's got that swipe layer on it. We are going to let that dry dry super fast and I'm going to do the same thing here but this brush is not going to do it well we'll give it a go but I don't think this is the right brush well just I'm gonna literally swipe it so this is gonna be kind of janky here but it's gonna be good it's a means to the end just give me that little bit of protection. Because the last thing you want is for that nasty cardboard to be showing through, right? I'm just gonna zoop around the outside here. Zoop, that's a new word, apparently. Effective immediately, zoop is now a word. Okay, now let's see on this. They're kind of hard to hang on to. Okay, pop my lid there. I always have a little measuring cup. I use those old Pyrex measuring cups, the heavy glass ones, to hold my brushes with water in them right away. Um, just so that they don't dry out, depending on what product you're using. Like the big top, you don't want that to dry on your brush. So quick dry. Hmm. 
Remember, don't hold your heat tool in one spot, especially if you're using something like this. Um, I'm constantly moving it because it will blister your paint. It'll blister big top. Um, it's super hot, so. I'm not sure about those little craft ones. I don't have one of those. I have this big Hummer. So just be very careful. Perfect. All right, now we can go with our mica powder and I'm going to actually pour some Big Top in a tiny little cup. Okay, well that's a little bit much, but whatever. I'm gonna wipe this lid, otherwise I'm never gonna get this back off. Okay, now I want to use, this is um, Artist Loft, that's Michael's. So I got this from Michael's, it's just a craft brush, um, but it's got this kind of pointed end, which kind of works good when it comes to getting, oh, one more thing I wanted to do was to pour a little bit of this mica powder in a separate container so I'm not dipping my big toppy brush into that. So I'm just going to dip some French, bi fresh French big top. No, nope, not French. Onto here. And then I'm going to dip a little bit of mica powder. And we're going to just place it on the snowflake. So I'm just kind of gooping on the big top and then dipping it in the mica powder and then putting that on there. And it's giving a little extra fancy. And then if you bring chocolates or cookies or I mean, they're gonna think that this little box is a pretty darn good part of the gift, right? I would think. I'd be pretty happy to get one of these little boxes. And when you get the glitter right into the big top like that, it doesn't tend to want to fly off on stick to everything. Like your eyeballs and because glitter, you know, it gets everywhere. I'm just kind of going around in the spots where I didn't get big top on that swipe layer that I put on initially. I'm just kind of going in those edges and getting that covered while as I go around. And I just start with these, with the snowflakes, get those how I want them get those blinged up and then you can kind of go after and add this mica powder in in other areas that you kind of want it if that makes any sense but all of this working with the big top like I am if you didn't put that swipe layer on there first, I call it a swipe layer. I don't know if that's just the wrong terminology or what, but I've been calling it that for almost three years, so I guess it's not gonna change. But anyways, the swipe layer is your protectant. 
that is what's giving you the grace to go along and dab and twist and brush and without pulling that paint off. Because if your, say your little box that you decided to paint up was, was not one of these little cardboard ones, you might be pulling your paint off. All right, so there is a lot of pretty sparkle in there now gives it a lot of love. So I'm gonna do the same with this so I can get that glued on. So I'm just gonna add some big top and then I'm gonna go along and brush on this mica powder. a little goes a long way and you do see it a little bit better when it dries like my brush is pretty loaded with these little mica flakes So I'm just gonna glue this down. And this is, it is just a normal carpenter's wood glue. It's an express set. It sets up in 10 minutes. It's what I use for everything. Um, it's what I glue the molds on with. You could probably use hot glue or E6000 if you want. Um, I find this works perfectly fine. That's what um, this one is attached with and it's not going anywhere, so. I'm gonna trust it. I'm just gonna smoosh this around a little bit. Might have a little bit much here, but oh well. What's some extra glue, right? Okay, so now, hopefully get this centered. I think that's pretty darn close for first try. But now I'm going to take my big top brush and just finish up that edge. Because remember when I painted the big top, I didn't go all the way. So I'm just gonna seal that up. just so that it's completely covered. All right, there's that. Now let's bling up this lid and we're almost done. So this mica powder is sitting into the big top. So it's, you don't have to go over it again and seal it, it'll be fine. I mean, you can if it makes you feel a little more secure in your, in your sparkles, but they're not gonna go anywhere. This mica powder just gives it a little bit of that iridescent kind of glimmer. Looks really pretty. A little more bling up top. And I 
just put a little bit coming out of these little points. I don't know why, just, just with what's kind of left on the brush. Still little bits of glitter in my brush that are just transferring out here, which I think just adds. Because on this one, I didn't put a band around that edge like I did on the blue one. Okay, I'm just gonna give this a lid on that big top. I can reach the lids without knocking everything down off my shelf. So it doesn't look like there's any sparkly bits floating in there, but there might be, and I might not want that to contaminate my whole jar. So I always just keep it separate and I'll just use this up on little projects as I go and everything will be fine. So let's just give this a little heat buzz. Put that in water. Okay. So there you go. You have a really cute little gift box. So that is it. Super simple little projects out of dollar store cardboard boxes. And the little, um, of course I don't have another one here, but just a plain candle pillar. Again, I'm Melissa with Sentimental Salvage and Design, and I, I don't know what I was gonna say after that. That's it, that's me. Merry Christmas, guys. Have a great, great Christmas. Hopefully you can spend it with your families, and stay warm, and that's it. Bye.